I can't wait to hear. <laughs> yeah, I bet you didn't know this stuff, Matt. What you make up? Matt right? Jennings <laughs> has won several Santa Claus imitation contests. Self-evident. <laughs> but in addition to that, he's been a fly angler for over 35 years. Uh, he's really been obsessed with fishing the Great Lakes tributaries ever since he moved up uh, to the North Shore of Illinois. And now Wisconsin, go Packers, from his home state of Texas. Uh, he's an innovative fly tire responsible for several regional fly tires. He's been involved in many fly fishing organizations, including president of the Gary Borger chapter of TU. As a conservationist, he's been a persistent advocate for a healthier management of the Great Lakes and surrounding waters. As a writer and photographer, his work has been included in several sources, including Dunn Magazine and a Tight Loop Magazine. And I just learned from him that he's been very involved in tearing down, what is it, you're now on seven? They've taken down seven dams on the Milwaukee River, and they are now reintroducing sturgeon into that river. Yeah. So very impressive. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker, Matt Jennings. I'd like to talk. <laughs> hey, you got to turn on? Good to go. I think he's good. Got you? All right, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Well, thanks, everybody, for having me. And this is a great turnout. I mean, first meeting of the fall, right? So, yeah. So I'm excited to see a big to you turnout, you know? Uh, as an ex-president, you don't always get them, right, in the first meeting. So this is fantastic. And uh, I hope I'll be able to give you an option. What I'm really looking to do here is just it's not that hard to get over to, you know, basically between the top of Chicago and the bottom of Milwaukee or the middle of Milwaukee, you know. And uh, a lot of times people go there on business or family or just vacation, you know, whatever. And I think we got some huge fish over there and improving fishing conditions that I hope I can kind of turn you on to and maybe get you excited about. That's 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 the whole plan. So I really did do overlook big fish because I, well, they're pretty big. So, and uh, a lot of people just don't get it. I mean, obviously like we don't quite have the quality of say Michigan, Michigan, you know, where they reproduce on a regular basis, but we got some real good streams and they're, they're getting better a lot. We're getting a lot of habitat. And like, just like we were talking about those dams coming out on the Milwaukee River, that's going to produce a lot more places that you can fish on that river that'll give you, you know, a diversified kind of place to fish. So, all right, let's go to the first one, Ray. So, uh, so yeah, so easy logistics, right? You're near like some big cities and easy, you don't got to fly there. You can drive there if you want to, right? I drove over here. It wasn't that bad. So, um, and then, like I said, improving conditions. Our fish are getting bigger all the time because of gobies and management and stuff like that. So, and um, and we got some, we got some nice fish. I'm not gonna lie. So this fish right here, pretty silver, pretty sweet little steelhead. You know, kind of looks like a North Shore steelhead you guys would catch, but it's nice. But it ain't. Go ahead, Rick. It ain't that. That baby taped out at 28 pounds. That was his first brown trout on the fly. <laughs> so he's done. <laughs> uh, if anybody knows Project Healing Waters, I hope some of you have volunteered there. I support them. Uh, that's the, that is probably, I think he's over it, but he was a Midwest coordinator. That's Jeff Ranke. Does anybody know that guy? Good dude. Really good dude. And uh, we went down there. He's, that guy's been giant. So that fish is huge. And uh, yeah, so we get, we get, I guess I'd say pretty close to the biggest brown trout in the world in the Milwaukee River. And um, we get them in like November and December, anytime they're basically November to ice out. So, yep. Uh, another guy, big project healing waters guy, Darwin Adams, good friend of mine. That's his biggest steelhead, and I'll be honest, most people's biggest steelhead. That's a huge fish. <laughs> that fish was ridiculous. So um, that's in the Milwaukee River, right at Capitol Drive. Um, oh, I don't, I don't believe in secrets. So any of you, this is your favorite spot to fish. Too bad. It's the middle of a big city. So uh, <laughs> it's in the middle of like a huge metropolis. So <laughs> you know, how secret is it, right? You got a question? Yeah, go ahead. 
oh, I don't know how big that one was, you know, but um, how much do you weigh? About the same. No, it was pretty big, though, honestly. It's a pretty big fish. It's pretty, too. I, I think it's a pretty cool-looking fish. So, and, and believe it or not, that's him happy. So that's, that's a, the happiest moment of his life, okay, next to maybe when his kids were born. So, you know, you know, it is what it is, right? You know, all right, go on. And then uh, we get big kings. I just got the report today by all my friends. The rain that you guys have been getting, we have been dreadful this summer. You're not the only ones. I feel your pain. So we have had all our rivers are crazy low right now, except for today. We got like a ton of rain and for some reason. And supposedly the kings were like hitting swing flies, supposedly. So they're in. If you want to go over the next couple of days, it's going to be hot. I'm not going to lie. If you like the kings, I'm, I don't know. I love the kings, but they pull right you know, like you know you can they pull hard right so uh they're a lot of fun and we've caught a couple kings together so you know um they're big you know so yeah there you go and then the coho will follow them in last year our coho run wow it was smoking there was like so many cohos in the river it became like obnoxious and uh it did up at kohler on the on the sheboygan river you couldn't you couldn't swing a fly without getting one somehow or another. I mean, it was just tons of coho in there and they were pretty big and they're pretty nice. And you know, most places people would be crazy excited about it. The only problem is they come in right before the Browns and the steelhead. And so I kind of not that excited, but it's good though. They're great. I mean, they pull real nice and um, you know, they're not silver like the silvers in Alaska that are actually silver. They're kind of colored up like that, but they're still cool. They get purple. They get like crazy colors. They get red. So they're pretty neat. A lot of people like them. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. So those are our four kinds of fish we mostly go for. Um, there is now a brook trout fishery. I know, it's weird. But there's a brook trout fishery in downtown Milwaukee. Uh, they just started putting them in. Don't know why. Don't care, but they're fun to catch uh they get they're like getting pretty big like i caught a 14 incher i saw a kid catch a 16 incher last year pretty but but thick bodied you know like 16 inch brook trout and and uh they'll hit dry fly so sometimes i'm out there with my eight weight and just throwing little caddis at them and they're eating it so it's kind of a fun thing to do right in the middle of town right you know so all right moving on all right so improving waters so you're saying man you just showed me all these giant fish. Why is this guy holding this fish? Nick is holding that fish because there, there's a new fish. There's another new group of fish that's coming in in the Root River for no apparent reason. After all the steelhead have left, and the Root River is an incredible steelhead fish. We'll talk about in a minute. They've got a summer run of scamanias coming in. Don't ask me why. And so they've just kind of established it, and it runs for like a month in there. And they're a good like six weight fish, I'd say. Like throw a six weight at them probably. Pretty cool. They, boy, do they hit flies. They're really good at it. So this one I've been asked already a couple times about. It's less crowded over there. Well, we've gotten a lot more habitat, right? We've extended out where they're all at. In the 90s and the early 2000s, holy cow, you go to the Root River, it was like Alaska. I mean, it was rough, you know? People were on top of each other. It's really not that way anymore. We put in probably twice as much habitat right on the Root. I mean, you got the pike over there that's expanded out. You've got the Milwaukee's expanding out. You've got, I mean, the Menominee came online. It used to be a concrete ditch, and now it's got tons and tons. We were just, Ricky and I were just talking about it today, man. That's probably like, I'd say 20-ish miles, 17 miles, something like that, of, of public accessible stream, you know? So it's worth doing. That's it. it right in Wauwatosa, which is a suburb, you know? of milwaukee so and i've talked to the biologists and they're kind of wishy-washy but i'll just say i'm putting it out tonight those those browns those steelhead are getting big on those gobies i mean they're just bigger than they were like 10 years ago they're just getting big they're getting used to eating those things so it's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool and uh we're catching the big fish this is my buddy kurt and he is standing in front of this ugly structure it's a post-Soviet era. Um, it's, um, that was the dam. That was the dam that was at Estabrook, right? And so that took like 20 dang years to get out of there. And it's gone, along with all the other dams we were talking about. 
And, and then at the other, the two dams we don't have, we're going to do fish passage this year, it seems like, on the two that are left. So we'll open it all the way up to Grafton, uh, Wisconsin, where I happen to live. What a surprise. I bought a house there. So they'll be, all be coming to my house. Um, so, yeah, so that dam is gone. And the upper structure you saw up there, the barricade. So, you know, it's getting better. You know, it's worth a trip. Go ahead. There you go. That's one of those. That's one of those little summer steelhead. That's one of those little guys. And uh, they really take a swung fly well. That's what's cool. So, all right, go ahead. That's on the root river. So um, there's a big fish. So to me, that's a big steelhead, right? Just girthy, right? Like that's what I'm talking about. They're just getting beefier, you know, better than they were even a few years ago. Good. And then these browns, you guys. I'm not. Gonna, You'll see it in this program. Josh, you've seen it, man. Those browns in December. Jen, you've seen it. It's for real. You know, world records are coming out of Lake Michigan. And we have seen some monsters. That 28-pounder, there have been some monsters in that river. And they're all over. It's not like one or two. We caught six fish over 20 pounds in a day fishing. Think about that. How many people would like just one 20-pound brown trout in their life? right me until i found this so and that once again is in the middle of milwaukee like right in it all right go ahead and you saw they're pretty right so so where are we fishing so i'm just talking about because like we said i moved to chicago so i'm like going north out of chicago i'm headed up towards milwaukee so i'm hitting i had little kids at that time so i'm hitting the pike and the root and then Oak Creek is a tiny little stream we'll talk about that was like right in the southern part of Milwaukee. And it's, it's, it's a really cool little stream. And that one may open up to a whole bunch of miles pretty soon. So anyway, so the pike, that, the pike is a cool place. The pike, uh, we used to have to fish it in this golf course and stuff, but it's a little tiny stream. But now we fish it in this place called Petrifying Springs Park, and we'll get into that. And then the root, that's where we have the steelhead facility. That's where all the eggs and milk come from. For, well, not all of them, but most of the ones come from for, for all of Wisconsin. And so you know that's going to be full of fish. And that, that's pretty cool. And that's, that's right in Racine. So, and then we got Oak Creek, which, like I said, is right by the airport in Milwaukee. If you're flown into Milwaukee, it's right by the airport. And then the Milwaukee River, which is what I love the most because it's kind of a big river. It feels like a big river. You can swing flies on a two-handed rod. It's fantastic like that. We got a whole bunch of more habitat coming online all the time, and it's great. And then the Menominee River, which is a newcomer, and I really didn't know that much about it, to be honest, because it used to be a concrete ditch the first two, few times I fished it, and I just gave up on it. And then Ricky and Jen moved next to it, and the next thing I know, I'm fishing it all the time. I probably caught more steelhead out of there than just about anywhere last year. So, all right, go ahead. So we'll start with the pike. Uh, it's called actually Pike Creek, but Pike River, whatever. I guess I got it wrong. And so Petrifying Springs Park is a big park there. It's a county park. Um, it, it's really nice at the bottom. There's a little blue sign that says beer garden. That's nice this time of year when you're catching kings. You can go catch a few kings, hit the beer garden, get you a sausage and a, and a brew. And um, it's... I like it. It's a cool little place. Like it's a small river. We're talking, you know, not like, not like a lot of CFS it's small, but it's, it's a lot of fun to catch big steelhead in there. So, um, back in the day, we used to have to go before they took down a dam. Why is it always taking down a dam? Have you noticed that lately? Um, so we took the DNR came in and they took down a dam on a golf course and it was like a, the dam was like that tall or something. I mean, it was nothing. And it opened up 10 more miles or something for these fish, right? Like, and what happened is, I guess, when would that have been? That'd have been like early 2000s, I'd say. So what happened is we no longer had to basically, I won't say trespass, but we didn't have to like keep our feet wet all the time, right? Because that's what we were doing. We were having to keep our feet wet and the private property owners, like the golf courses were ticketing us and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So now we're in a county park. We're and they've done all kinds of habitat work there. Trout Unlimited has worked there. So it's really nice. Um, and then, so the, anyway, 
Yeah, so now we don't have to keep our feet wet anymore. We can just fish in the park, good. So there's a little map of it. This is the park. What you don't see is like right in here to A there is actually um, owned by Wisconsin Parkside, UW Wisconsin Parkside. And you can fish in there also, pretty much. I've never heard anybody get in trouble. It's like hiking trails and biking trails along there and stuff like that. But in the park, it's just, it's a really nice setup. Like, um, I guess you'd say it's kind of intimate and they've done like a bunch of habitat work in there. And we get a tremendous number of steelhead in there, even though it's a small stream. Go ahead. Oh wait, go back one. Can you go back one? Co-host Kings come in there too. Yeah, exactly. I forgot to mention this. So one of the things I, I forgot to mention is these CFSs, those cubic feet per second, things those are really really important like so for example I remember I said it was a small stream this little stream sometimes will run at like 10 CFS if we have no rain right and uh, you just can't fish it like that's not fishable like you know so you want to make sure it's like between like 20 and 100 CFS and you just go to the you go to the I just say Wisconsin stream flow Google and it it pops up a whole chart of all the different places they have a gauging station. And I use that for every river that's on this talk tonight, okay? And it is so important. And I will give you all the CFSs that you need to be between to fish those optimally, okay? So for this one, 20 to 100, I'd really say more like 20 to 80, but a buddy of mine who's a graphic artist helped me with these and he put that on there. Yes. Ah, good question. Cubic feet per second. So if you think like a box of water, that's a one foot by one foot by one foot going down the stream. That's what we're talking about. Okay? So it just tells you how much water is in the stream, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah. Good. And then this is the middle pike. And I don't, I wouldn't fish here anymore. I used to fish here a lot. And the guy who made this slide used to be a guide, and this was his home water. But to be honest with you, just do the park or the mouth or another stream. I really good. don't love that. I don't love that stretch anymore. And the main reason I don't love that stretch anymore, there's a guy on there who owns a whole bunch, who owns a farm on there, and he has loudly made it clear he wants nobody on there. And instead of fighting him, just don't. <laughs> you know, that's the bottom line on this. All right, so lower pike, though. Um, it comes comes across 32, which is the road that goes up Lake Michigan. And there's a mouth there, and there's like a rearing station for Salmon Unlimited. Um, I've never done any work with them, but I know they're a big organization. But you can swing at the mouth with flies when it's coming, when it's really raging through there, when it's coming out like two, 300 CFS, and you can catch fish, you know? So, all right, go ahead. All right, so this is what the park looks like. And the most important thing in the slide is restrooms, right? So <laughs> that is no longer true though, because this is now kind of closed down and directly across from the, by the beer garden now, which you'll see by the dog park, of course. Why wouldn't you? It's a heated, nice restroom that's open 24 hours a day. So when your hands are blue and you can't handle it any longer, you know, you're freezing your butt off. You can go in there and hit the hand dryer. Hand dryer. So <laughs> it's a great place to fish. Yeah. But that's a big steelhead. And that came out of that little tiny stream. Um, you know, we catch them like that in there. It's worth it. It's, I don't really know why, but the, they go up there in large numbers, you know. And they're really fun to catch. The browns go up in there pretty good, too. And the kings, too. So for a little stream, it hits above its weight, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. All right, go ahead. And there we go, Darwin again with the, I bet you that was the female from that male I just showed you. I'll bet you, go ahead. But, uh, and then like, here's a king out of there. My buddy Randy has. So um, pretty big kings out of a little river. If you ever want to just, it's a neat fight when you're in there with those guys because it's, yeah, it's small quarters and those fish are pulling and water's flying and it's a lot of fun. Not that easy to net or tail, but they're, 
it's worth doing. So um, this is the new habitat. So at the top of the park, they bought some more land. And these are the two forks. One goes this way and one goes that way. And they put in some new habitat, some lunkers and stuff, weird stuff. And uh, so now you can go up those if you keep your feet wet and um, nobody yells at you. So that's good. And uh, there's some good gravel, some good gravel up that way. And it's, it's really nice. This is actually a bike trail they built over the river. But um, so there's improvement going on is my point. So, all right, go ahead. All right, going to the root. The root, this used to be the big daddy over there. This was the one everybody fished. It was, I actually, the first time I ever fished there, I met up with some people who were camping in the parking lot, and they were from the Twin Cities, and they took me to show me how to do this. So maybe it's all going around in a circle in my life. So anyway, um, so you got uh, Island Park is at the south, and Lincoln Park, the Colonial Park. And if you're a cool kid, you try to throw everybody off, you just call it High Street. Okay, so if you're talking at Shy Fly down in Chicago, that's going to be High Street. But that's Colonial. And then Quarry Park, and then you ended it at Port Lake Dam, and it really ends because it's 20 feet tall. So it's that's it for the fish. So um, notice it's going to have a big range on there, 70 to 500 CFS. So you can almost always fish this stream is my point, right? Like it's all the time. Sometimes you'll meet Eve there. So, so I mean, it, it's always good. Go ahead. Um, and it's got all these parks on it, right? So 38, Highway 38, that's Horlick Dam is under Highway 38. Um, and then it comes along here by the Quarry Park, which is just a big lake. Has rainbows in it. But anyway, that's all really good in there, up to the dam. That used to be the hot spot. You had to fight your way in there tooth and nail. But nowadays, actually, it's pretty easy to get in there. And uh, you just hike up upstream next to the lake there and then it comes down right through here and that's colonial that's colonial park high street and that's that's been basically the same but when it gets down into lincoln park which is right above so the big thing about the pike is it has that rearing station it has that um it has that big place where they take all the eggs in the milk so that's what is the draw right if you release more eggs or more molts into anywhere else, that's where they come back to, right? So there's tons of fish in there, but they've done tons of habitat work in Lincoln Park now above that station. Good. So uh, this is the lower, this is the lower root. I honest, I'll be honest with you. Island Park's the farthest I've ever fished down. I don't know. It's so good above and there's so much to fish. Good. The nice thing is if you're confused, you won't be. Uh, when you get there, there'll be signs that just tell you exactly where you're at at every single one of these parks. They just put those new blue signs in. Now, this is very important. If you're going to go fish the pike, though, this is really something you have to know. You'll hear, hear people saying the weir, the weir, the weir. That's that rearing station thing where they collect the eggs. And this is what it is. And so between each one of these little things, they can drop boards in. And that will close off the stream. And then over to this side, there's a ramp, a fish ladder, and it goes into tanks. And then they collect all the fish in there. And you can go there and it has big windows and you can see all these enormous fish swimming around. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. It's really neat to see. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. And so um, if you look and you can't see through here, right? If you can't go through, if you can't see through there, the fish have to be below it, right? Like. You better fish down, right? You better fish Island Park and stuff. And so that first thing you're going to do, unless you know better, if you know people have told you it's open or something, you want to go and look at this and you want to physically see that the boards aren't in. You want to make sure they're not stopping there, right? Now they'll process those fish. Once they get as many as they need, they'll process those fish. You'll take the eggs and the milk out of them. And they'll send them upstream and they'll still hit. Like, who knew? Like, you could handle a fish that badly and it will still hit, but it will. And there'll be a bunch of fish above it. But by then, they'll take all those boards out of there. There's a, I think it's 500 foot. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's about 500 foot zone around that structure. You can't fish. It's a, it's a sanctuary or whatever you want to call it. 
So anyway, but go there, go to the facility and look, make sure the boards aren't in. Because I've known a lot of people who I've gone, hey, buddy, there are no fish up here right now. <laughs> you need to be below that thing. And they'll be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you know. So, all right. There you go. There's a nice little brown. We caught that last spring steelhead fishing. That thing was long. That was a really long fish. And uh, it goes to my other thing, which is most of these fish don't really move their lies. They like the same lies year after year after year after year after year. So it was chocolate that day, right? Like straight chocolate, right? Josh is there too. So, and I just knew where they are because I fish there a lot. But if you find where they are and then you go back the next year, there'll be a fish there again, okay? It's just kind of how these tribs work somehow. So yeah, but you got that. You got a lot of that. There's so much of that to find over there. Keep going. So yeah, I mean, look at, that's a nice crummer. This guy right here, this guy came in. He's a TU guy out of North Dakota. And uh, yeah, he came in for a conference and they asked me if I'd take him out. And I did. Really nice guy. He was the He's uh, head of the whole Western United States for the Army Corps of Engineers. So, and he, and I said, holy cow, man. He says, yeah, I worked under Clinton. He didn't like Clinton, but he worked under Clinton. And uh, he said, uh, he said, I've been on every fancy ranch in the West. He goes, I've never caught a brown trout that big in my life. <laughs> he, was, he was serious. And uh, he caught some steelhead that day. He just thought that was the greatest thing that ever happened to him. All right, go ahead. And this guy, I don't know, I just love that photo because he has it right. Just hook into a big fish and just have fun, like play that thing, you know? Don't like, don't get all excited, you know, don't get all worried about it. Just play that thing. And then Mark, he's the head of relation, uh, public relations or something for TU. And uh, they had me take him out and he, he got these brown trout and steelhead. He was a real nice guy. He, he said, yeah, they had him go on six trips before he never caught one. He caught six fish that day. I mean, it's a good fishery, man. It's like a really good fishery. And then the kings in there just get, they get ridiculous, you know? So that's my buddy Kyle with one. Good. And then this is really important. If the, if that, if they're like, man, the boards are in the weir, you got a fish below it. This is the wall. Okay. Everybody knows the wall, the wall. It has like a fascia of rock on the front of it. And then underneath, there's like a foot under there. Where do you think the fish are, right? So <laughs> anybody want to guess? So the wall is super famous. You'll see that bridge. You can't miss it and stuff. And so you, you throw your drifts or your swing or whatever, like, and you want to literally hit the wall. You want to hit it, like put it on it. But, um, so many fish on that wall because they're waiting to go up that weir and so they're stuck there and they're just in hold and they'll come out and just smash you so it's pretty great okay go ahead all right oak creek oak creek is cool short and sweet one mile long comes out of lake michigan it has one mile until it hits a dam so um notice how little remember that one went to like 500 cfs thing only goes to 70. It is little. And um, go ahead. Hit it. There are fish there almost all the time. So this is the mill pond. If you fish above the mill pond, you will not catch any fish. Um, because there's a big dam there and you can't get past it. Great habitat in here. They just did even more work on it last year. And it came out good. And people are still catching the heck out of fish on there. And... It just goes up and down like that creek, like one day to the next, you better be watching what your CFS is. But if it's right, oh, it's right. Like really, really right. And sometimes it's only right for half a day, you know? And um, yeah, so that's good. And this is how people feel about this creek right here. Some people love it and some people, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, that's it, basically. That's that's totally. Some people hate it because there are trees and everything. They're all tangled up, right? You know, but I mean, come on, you want one? Everybody wants one of those, right? I mean, that's just beautiful fish. And uh, this 
this is because they'll come in and go up that stretch, hit the dam, and go back out. Then it'll rain two days from now. They'll go up that thing, hit the dam, and go back out. Like, so they're fresh, man. They're like going out to the lake, you know, and stuff. It's crazy. And the the fish turn over. There's pretty this is the one place to be crowded, I will tell you that. But the fish turn over. Like dirt like I've I've watched people work a run really good. I'll wait like 15, 20 minutes, and I'll work that run and catch fish. It's like the fish just move in. They're moving in all the time, moving out to the lake, moving back in. It's so short, you know? And also, go ahead. I'll go one more. This. In the spring, it's the first place that warms up enough to catch a steelhead. That day, I mean, look at that chocolate. It's running like a thousand or something. I mean, these ice chunks are coming off of the mill pond. We caught fish later, like two hours later in that stream. Like, it's crazy. Like, it just drops and go, it goes up and down so fast that you can like, you can catch fish on a day when no other stream is ready to go. I mean, that's just the way it is. So it can be a savior at times. And so, yeah, just to see that and think, man, there's no way you could ever possibly catch a steelhead out of that that day. Nope, we did. Got a bunch. And they came in on that, on that rise, you know. That was like the first, the first spring thaw, you know. Go ahead. And skinny water. Look how little that water is, you know. So that's why some people hate it. They just can't handle it. They're just like, that much water and you're catching big steelhead? I can't do that, you know. So I, I get it. Trees, trees are a problem. You're gonna you're gonna hit some. So yeah. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. It's it is a little weird how a steelhead that's really chrome can be in skinny water. You have no idea it's there. Like you think you're looking right at it. It's a big fish. You will never see it. It's crazy. I just put this one in because you know who that is? Jerry Sapp. That's Jerry Sapp from Lee Wolf to you, and he's one of my best friends, and I just love him, so I put him in. <laughs> I just like him, and he caught a nice steelhead. What I brought, put this in is that's like um, know, like half an hour of fishing on one run on that steelhead stream when they're in. Just like the water came up, I was there. That's like half an hour right there. All right, Milwaukee. The bigger, that's the biggest stream we got, the Milwaukee, right? So um, it has access all over it. I mean, it has a ton of access. And then look, 400 to 1,000. We're moving up in class here. We're moving up quite a bit. Double what was on the pike. I mean, you know, or, you know, so, I mean, on the root, excuse me, double what was on the root. So, um, so yeah, so this, you fish it, I'll just be honest, just fish it either at Hubbard Park. Capitol Drive or Estabrook Park. That's what I'd tell you. Go ahead. Until we get the fish passage in and then go ahead, fish higher. It's supposed to be coming in. All right. Um, yeah, so basically, um, downtown would be like right here, like just off the map, I'd say. But this is uh, Capitol Drive. It's a little bit of a rough neighborhood. I'm not going to lie to you. But um, it's better than it used to be, is what it is. But once you turn into the park along this little road here, um, it's fine. It's great. And you can park there. There's big parking lots and there's ways to get down to the river. And you'll see these, you'll know you're in the right place because they're the largest TV antennas you've ever seen in your life over your car. So uh, they're very large. And uh, there's so much gravel there. You can just walk all day long and just fish, and it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. I love it. Um, go ahead, man. Yeah, so below Capitol Drive, down Locust, and then that'd be north, is they've improved it recently, like really improved it recently. And um, you can swing that. That water is good swing water. It's pretty wide through there. Um, and... I don't, like, Nymphinite and stuff is fairly tough, relatively tough, I would say. But it's good swing water, and you can work all the way along through there. 
And uh, there's bike paths on both sides of it, so it's really accessible, you know. Um, I would not park my car on North Avenue, nor would I park it probably on Locust. I will find me a parking lot somewhere. It's just a rough neighborhood. That's all I can say about it. All right, go ahead. But there you go. That's the kind of fish you can swing up in there on a regular basis. I mean, like, it's pretty pretty amazing that it, you know, was a super fun site at one time. And it's, it's back, yeah. Oh, great, man. It's okay. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's okay down there. It's just not like the habitat. It's more mud bottom. Like, uh, I'll tell you who does really good down there. I mean, I, I guess I'm thinking it's all fly fishing, but people with spawn do really good down there. Like, it's better there, I would say, there than... Because it's not gravel bottom really there as much. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's closer to like the lake where you're talking about, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's all I'd say. Like, waiting there isn't as much. I mean, it's kind of more mucky, I guess I'd say, sort of in a way. I mean, man, that for living and stuff, that's a hot area, you know. It's a great area. But, um it's kind of big water too, don't you think? Or it is, yeah, right. It's really, but just a nice park and everything, yeah. That's true too. That's true. I took that slide out though. Yeah, it's true though. Go ahead. Yeah, my financial advisor. I'm obligated to put that in there. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, but uh, you can really find some solace on the Milwaukee River, I find. Like, it's a big river, and I really find you can find some solace in the middle of this giant city, honestly. Um, you know, catch you some nice clean fish, maybe a big king. This guy came up from Texas to visit me and found this giant king. He could not have been a happier guy going home on the plane. Like, you know, had some business in town and just visited and, you know, had a great time. Go ahead. And then this is it, browns. It's the best brown fisher in the world, man. I swear to you right now, if my opinion, this is where it's happening right now. Go ahead. Just, oh, who's that guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> Making his Ricky face. So <laughs> look at the girth on that fish. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And we just throw these little orange eggs, like natural looking size too, like tiny eggs and they eat them they just get fooled you know because they're in there eating the eggs right from all the cohos that are dying and um and last year we also did caddis caddis was pretty rocking last year too for whatever reason yep clean gotta love those cheeks on there good yeah we'll just run through these but i mean they look like brown trout your friends will notice when you put them up on instagram so <laughs> like that deal <laughs> I mean, honestly, I like for driving like what four and a half hours. You can do worse, you know. <laughs> Cheap, right? Cheap vacation, you know. Hey, there we go. Now we're talking right there. Yep. Yeah. Jen, is it cold though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will tell you, this is what we do. I'm I'm talking to Minnesotans, so I didn't make a big thing out of it. But, you know, if I was down south, I would. But it's freaking cold. Okay, like when those browns are in there, that's this like end of November, December to ice, right? Until it's just covered, right? So just know it's what it is. I mean, but is it worth it? Pretty much. I mean, you know. <laughs> go ahead. You make your own opinion. There you go. There's Josh, man. Josh, how'd you get that fish? Swung it up. Yep. Yeah, he put it on the two-hander. Yep. Go ahead. Good grabs. Yeah, picking up big browns like that, multiples of them in a day. You ain't doing that everywhere. I'm sorry. You're just not. You're not making that happen. You know? Go ahead. There they are, man. It's not a bad experience. I'm here to tell you right now. A lot of people give it. You know, I, I've given this talk. This is my seventh time I've given this talk. I'll be honest. A bunch of TUs and some other fishing clubs and stuff. Everybody else says, man, you're going to blow that up. 
I dare you to come out. I never catch anybody out there. Like, <laughs> I never see anybody. Everybody, oh, I'm going to do that. I never see anybody. So I text me, whatever, email me. I'll take you out. I don't care. You know, go ahead. So then the Menominee. Menominee, that's a sweet, sweet river. This thing was a concrete ditch. I mean, it was literally the hugest concrete ditch I've ever seen. And so that thing has now become miles of public parkland. And there's a, go ahead, hit again real quick. So right here, you could go right by what? Yount. Who's Yount? Anybody know? Oh, oh, didn't he play for a team that's going to be in the postseason? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I think he's going to play for someone that's going to be in the postseason. Used to. No, but right there by Amfam Field, right by the baseball stadium, right there. Good fishing. Just park right on that road. There'll be other people. Good swing water. Good water. Just in general, just like straight up. Three Bridges Park. They built that just for fishing. It's a bike path, and that's just for fishing right there. It's like kind of an industrial area. It's not the prettiest, but the fish are there. There's a lot of fish. Keep going. Um, that was three river or three bridges. Three bridges. It's kind of what under the highway, right? It's like literally under the underpasses, kind of. It's a weird feel, but tons of fish. A lot of fish. A lot of a lot of gravel. That's the first park they hit when they're coming out of the lake, so they're fresh, you know. Uh, early and late in the season, that's really good. And then we move up to like Tosa, Wauwatosa. And oh man, there's so much good stuff. Um, all this behind Saz is a real famous restaurant there. Uh, you park there, go down. Um, and then right in here, that's all real good. Like all this is in a park, right? Yeah, it's all in a in a public park. It's easy to get to. And then you right in downtown, like in the middle of the buildings, it's still kind of a concrete thing in there, but tons of fish. They took the bottom out and it's it's gravel, you know? And so that's worth doing. And then up this way, if you go up this river, um, up the Menominee River Parkway, you can go all the way to Menominee Falls, which is miles and miles, and there's park on one side of it. So I don't know, we haven't even explored it all to be very honest, yeah. See, that's yeah, true. Right? It looked like the L.A. River or something, right? Which used to be a steelhead stream. The L.A. River did. Go ahead. So anyway, the access is really good. Here's why this is in here. Pretty fish, and but everything. That's the Bucket to Bond. That's like the big, it's one of the big restaurants in downtown Wauwatosa. I mean, you're right there, you know? That's like the pilings behind there. And all this from where I'm at down there is all gravel. It's all got fish. Easy peasy. And the Bucketon's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the Bucket to Bun. It's like a fake uh, supper club. It's like a fake no up north supper club. It's kind of cool. It's real kitschy. You know, get your basic $12 old fashioned in there. So. <laughs> What, you never done that? <laughs> yeah. And then this is some of the gravel. That's This is what, Hoyt Park? Yeah. And um, one day I'm walking in there, and my friend Jen is swinging up the most beautiful steelhead all by herself and trying to land it. Oh, I was like, oh, my gosh, on her two-handed rod. Fantastic. Just walked up on her. She's netting this thing. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So it's great. All right, when to fish this thing? So obviously – not in the middle of summer, right? None of these are good in the middle of summer. Unless you like smallmouth, Milwaukee River is pretty good. So um, so for steelhead, right? March and April, great. And then October through ice out. And if you're gonna swing, October through ice out for steel most of the time, okay? They're more active in the fall, so. Um, and then salmon happening right now. We're later than you guys, right? So so it's just coming on now. It started 
like about September 15th, we start getting kings in. But if like this is a low water year, so today was the first day they're all coming in really. There've been some around, but now they're really coming in. And those will go all the way through November. We go, we go full kings for like three weeks or something. And then it depends on the rain, but basically. And then we run into the cohos, right? And the cohos are like the silver is a little bit smaller and uh, more colored up. So, but then October through the ice, that's really kind of the end of October through the ice. When it frees over, we're going to go browns, 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 browns. It's called brown town. So that's it. That's, that's what that time period is. And uh, this probably is the best thing I'm going to show you. That's that where you get your CFS. And you better know it because some of these rivers, when they're too high, like the Milwaukee, it'll hurt you. It's a big river. You know, you can get hurt waiting that thing. Um, and then some of those, like Oak Creek or something, it can be six CFS or five CFS or two CFS. You can't fish that. No reason to drive all the way over there, you know? So I go ahead. So this is this is a, a guy that guided on there for a long time, and um, Rich Brown, but they called him Fat Man. I don't know why they call him Fat Man. And so he wasn't that fat. He's big, but he wasn't that fat. But anyway, and he told me Oak Creek can go up and down in one day if it rains, but the pike, you know, it's pretty small too. It'll go up and down in like two or three days. The root, though. It is a long, silty, slow river, and it will be up for the next several weeks. It just, it takes a long time to go up. They just don't come down. Like, it just stays up. And then the Milwaukee, if it's over 1,100, God bless you if you get out there. It's going to take you. It's, it's just a big, it's, it's faster than people think. They all think they know it. Everybody thinks they know every sandbar on there. Good luck. Have fun with that. You're, you're going to get hurt. So. Don't go out there if it's over 1,100, I'd say. I don't, you know. But down to about 300, I'd say. three, 400, you can fish it. And most of the time, it's in like the 600 range, so it's perfect. All right. Go ahead, man. So ways we fish, we fish with the eggs and the nymphs. I don't really go chuck and duck. I, I'm kind of, I won't go to like a full like mono line instead of a fly line and a bunch of weights and all that crap. I won't do that. I just don't. There's none of these rivers really lend themselves to it like they do in Michigan and some other places, but I also just won't do it. So, um, and then we also swing flies. All right, go ahead. So this is what I do. It's kind of chuck and duck ish, but it's a little different too. I usually run like an egg and a nymph on it and you can see like I've got it there, but it's like like from the end of your fly line, there's about four feet ish of uh, twelve to fifteen pound mono. Then it comes down, you can throw in um you throw in a blood in there, or you can throw like a triple surgeon, and um and then you just leave one tag and you put your weights on it. It's instead of having to put like a three way swivel there, it's cheaper, it's easier. So and then you just run to your first egg uh, or your first egg and your nymph or your nymph and your egg whichever way you want to go and we do run um, most of the time on these little streams i run uh 12 onto my top fly and point fly will be eight pounds uh fluoro though most of the time very good and so these are you can see the eggs in these fish and they take them i mean people i mean they'll move for them they they like it if you have the right egg we don't fish a lot of, like it used to be when I first started fishing these things, people would throw those big chunks of yarn and stuff. They ain't happening no more. People are like, like I throw these little eggs that are like, um, they're made out of Estaz or, and they're real light or braid. I would like wrap braid into an egg and, and fish love them. They just really are the right thing. They look real to them. I also put a veil. I always put a veil over the top of all my eggs out of yarn. So it looks like a little, like a two color egg sort of, but yeah. See, like this is what the Browns are eating. The reason that's in there is because that's what the Browns are eating. It's size to the natural from the Kings and it's the same color as what the Kings do. And um, it's cheese color and then leave it in your windowsill for about six months and then it'll be the right color, it'll be perfect. Yeah, all right, go ahead. <laughs> You know, I fish mostly like a six 
Uh, but like a salmon egg hook or a, like a, you know, short body, heavy, heavy wire, heavy wire, because we we do break them out. Um, and so this is what I was talking about before. So steelhead especially, not everything else as much, but browns are kind of the same way. Uh, but steelhead for sure. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a steelhead guide recently, and I said, that's got to be the easiest job in the world since the fish are always in the same damn places every time. So every time, every time, the same dang places. So steelhead, they have preferred lies, and year to year, unless that stream has structurally changed, if there's been some kind of metamorphic change of some kind, those they just stay in those same lies. So even if the water's up and off color and everybody's standing there looking at the water going, it's too dang high, it's not. Like, they're still there, you know what I mean? And they're still eating. And so what I have found to do is, anybody do contact nymphing, euro nymphing, all that stuff? So um, I kind of took some of that and I downsized my egg, downsized my leaders, and... What I do is I just punch it through the surface tension. It gets down, even in the fast water. And then I just go more direct. So it's like, you know, it's like, just like contact nymphing, you know, basically. And I can't see them, but they seem to eat the hell out of it. So that's that. Yeah. I do not add more weight because if you add more weight, you get a less, your drag goes off. Yep. So this only works if you, if you're dra if it's at the right speed, right? Like I always say, it's like if you ate everything off a conveyor belt all day, if it was the wrong speed, you wouldn't eat it, right? And that's how I feel. And I see people all the time that'll put like a big old bunch of weights and clunk it when it gets heavy. I go the opposite. I go the other way. And it seems to work. I catch a lot. And then the other thing I, I have a big problem with is like you'll see steelhead on the red doing their thing. And if you fish behind them, that's where the fish that are eating the eggs are actually at. Those ones are busy. <laughs> you know, I mean? They're doing their thing. But if you fish behind them, that's where the egg eaters are. And so a lot of people, they see fish, they throw fish. You know, And I'm just saying, they're back there. They're eating. You know? They're going to eat an egg or a nymph, right? All right, go ahead. And then swinging flies. Nowadays, I go more direct and I just use a sink tip line. But yeah, like a short sink tip, all you need to know is short sink tip um, and a little bit of heavy fluorocarbon just to turn things over. And then just a little bit of, you know, eight or 12 pound fluoro and swing, get to swinging. Um, and there you go. That's what you get. That's a bad hair day. It's my favorite swing fly. Bad hair days. Go ahead. Yeah, look. Big old stuff. Big old um, shiny stuff. Go ahead. Hey, who's that? Yeah, so you can see somebody believes in a lot of flash. Worked, though, like four times in a row. So I ain't hammering on you. You did it. You made it happen. So there you go. That was a good one. Love swinging them up on the two hands. So if if you think you got to go to British Columbia or Pacific Northwest, maybe come over and practice where I'm at. It's good too, you know. Get some pretty fish. All right, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, <laughs> I do. I still like the bad hair day, and sometimes I do fish the old spruce fly for steelhead, and they hammer on it. No one else throws that. It's a cool fly. Um, yeah. Oh, Milwaukee is really the only true steel uh, two-handed water. It's only it's the only thing wide enough we got. You know, it's how much bigger it is. Uh, people do it all the time on the uh, root. It's not really two-handed water, so to speak. So, good. That's it. That's all I got. I know it was a lot, but I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I hope maybe you'll come over and check us out. You know, any questions? Okay. So thank you very much do now is open up uh, questions to the Zoom audience first. And uh, if the guys on the Zoom could put your questions in the chat, we already have a couple and then I'll read them off to Matt so that everybody here in the in the studio audience can hear. Uh, I should mention that we are going to put Matt's presentation on our website and we'll send you a link. Uh, so if you're looking for those things like the uh, stream gauge 
to know what the flow is on the Milwaukee so you don't walk out there and kill yourself. Uh, all that information will be Good on plan. our website. Uh, so anyway, the first uh, question we had was up here. Hold on. Uh, question from Douglas Kaiser. My son is attending Carthage College, which is on the pike. It is. Is there fishing on the campus, or does he need to move to the petrifying springs, springs right at the mouth? Or, or at right the, at the mouth, excuse me. Yeah, uh, it's muddy in there. It's like reedy and muddy. It's kind of tough. There are fish in there. Okay. I don't fish there, but I know some people that fish there, but I think it's a little tough on the right on the campus. I personally think, and it's not that far to the other stuff. It's really easy to get to, especially the mouth would be. Okay. Uh, we got a question from Evan Griggs. Evan, who uh, actually we're not sure if he really exists anymore because he only ever seems to attend anything online these days. Uh, but his his question is, how are the rivers looking with the drought this year? And will there have been any impact on the fall run? Yeah, it's been low. Yeah, so um, it has been really low. Um, but we got some rain today. Supposedly they picked up. Uh, I haven't officially checked the CFS, but I heard they picked up. And um, yeah, if it doesn't pick up, we'll definitely be affected because we were affected. Um, we were affected on some of the spring run and stuff. So yeah, it'll definitely happen. You know, you just got to hit those those parameters of the CFS that I've just given out. So yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we may be getting more questions on the chat, but while we're waiting for those, why don't we open up the question to the uh, studio audience? And what I'd like to do here is once you ask a question, I'm going to repeat it for Matt so that the folks on Zoom can hear. Uh, Scott, go ahead. So the question to Matt is, what conditions does he nymph in and what conditions does he swing in? Yeah, so... Um... Well, basically, I nymph more in the spring. I mean, and I swing more in the fall. But um, you can do it all the time, honestly. I mean, it just depends what you want to do that day um, and how you want to do it. Obviously, the difference in the number of fish, I probably shouldn't even have to say this, is much larger on the nymphs and the, and the eggs. And it's, it's more like you're right up on them kind of. And the swinging, you're not going to, but maybe that's not what you're doing today or this trip or that, you know, maybe that's just what you like to do is swing. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a personal choice, but you can do it all the time. I mean, honestly. Okay. Good question. Other questions. Uh, Chris, go ahead. Yeah. Especially steelhead. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so great, the question from question. Chris is to t uh, talk a little bit more about what those steelhead lies look like. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's a little bit of depth to it, right? Tops and bottoms of pools, right? Good gravel on the bottom. And you want like, ideally you'd be like two to three feet of depth in there and kind of walking speed as they always say, but that's the truth. I mean, that's where they're at. And then, um, like if there's any kind of like scrub out structure under a branch or something like that, they will get up in that stuff. And if you're brave enough to get your flies in there, you may be rewarded or you may be crying. Is what it is. <laughs> They're in there. There's a tree. I've hooked so many steelhead out from under. And every time I take someone out and they haven't had one, I'm like, throw it under there. And it's usually a fish under there. Okay, Dean, I think you've got a question. Yeah, right. Okay. So the question is, those trout are so big, are they spawning for the fifth, seventh, or eighth year in a row? Yeah. And, you know, the truth is, like, if we don't take them out of there, if we take our picture and put them back, the browns and the steelhead will go back out to the lake, and they'll they'll come back. And those big ones I'm showing you, I like, I guess in the Pacific North, what they call those A's, right? Like, those would be the ones that are multi-year. Yeah, so... um. I've heard they can come back in like four times. So the steelhead, I don't know about the Browns. I don't know about the Browns. Browns seem to be 
we just they stock so many like this big ones they just come in and i don't know man they gotta be pretty old i, I gotta imagine i don't know really to be honest i don't know but yeah they do come in multiple times if you don't take them out of the system yeah okay we got another question in the chat which is what weight rod are you typically using oh yeah great idea um so eight weight so here's here's a pet peeve i always tell people eight weight and they always bring a seven they <laughs> always bring a seven possibly a six <laughs> it's a constant so <laughs> if you want to break that it's a six or a seven it's an eight or a nine if you want to catch fish <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. What did we break last year? Like five or six rods. I mean, like a bunch of rods. Like, seven. <laughs> and we got a winner. For, so. for, 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 for the right, Zoom for audience, Jen has just confessed <laughs> that she broke a seven last year. <laughs> it happens a lot. I'm not going to lie. People drive all the way out there. They beat me at 530 in the morning with a seven weight in their hand. I go, did we not talk about this last night? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, Brent, did you have a question? Yeah, no. The question is about hatches. That. What kinds of hatches are there? Yeah. No real hatches, except for those little brook trout will eat sometimes. But no, not really. This is all kind of more, you know. Yeah, it's not like, it's not exactly like that. Because, you know. And the cast is kind of like an oval cast. It's kind of a kind of a flop on those nymphs and those eggs. So, yeah, it's not the pretty. It's not that. You know. Now river runs through it here. Yeah. Next question. Nope. No small fish. So, so <laughs> the question is on the the question not is on the. No, on, the, on, the, on the fall run browns you said you're showing big fish on your slides but what is the size range and are there any smaller fish yeah there are some smaller fish we catch a lot and so i'd say there's a lot of like 24 like 20 to 24 is 20 <laughs> i mean we catch a lot that are like five or six pounds i'd say i don't know we catch a few every year that are over 20. I mean, 20 pounds, not 20 inches. I mean, you know, they're big. I don't know what to say. I mean, they're kind of goofy, right? I mean, you saw the pictures. They look like a brown trout out of a stream, but they're, you know, it's like a cartoon brown, right? Like it's, it's goof. It's, but they're, they're there. They're easily accessible. You don't got to pay barely anything to get to them. So, you know, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Okay. There's another question on Zoom, which is, uh, is the best catching in low light? Yeah, well, first flyover, if you hear nothing else today, first flyover on Steelhead, that is the gospel. <laughs> so that first fly that goes over a fish in the morning, and there's a reason I say they're meeting me at 530 in the morning, that fly's getting eaten. Like, like you're going to start your day good. So, so partly because it's low light, but partly yeah, I'm because sure, you just have minutes. No, because people haven't been harassing them for 12 hours, I think, you know. <laughs> it's, it's the middle of a city, and they're big. There are people there, you know, from time to time. So, I mean, honestly, in the morning, especially on the swing, if you're swinging and you show up at noon, you got a shot, you know, you got a shot at this. You show up at five in the morning, stake out your spot on a run and start throwing and work your run, you're going to catch some fish. I mean, that's, that's like everywhere, right? Like that's, but yes, yeah, low light helps a lot. Not so much in the afternoon as much, but but you don't want a you want a cloudy day, not a sunny day. So, so. okay, more questions? Yes, Eve. Hey. Yeah. Do uh, people do people keep fish or release them? Is the question. Yeah, and uh, people do harvest them. Strangely, people harvest mostly those stupid kings. Ugh, boy, that's the last fish I would do because you know they're they're dying so um i guess they're just big so people harvest them um but most of by the time those guys kind of go away the steelhead and brown people that are out there freezing their tails off they're 
they're mostly putting them back. So, yeah. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to see those big fish come in because honestly, just like we had talked about, they've come in a few times and they've made it, right? So that's a big fish. You know, that, that huge, that one huge steelhead Darwin was holding, that fish probably four times in or something. It's pretty good, right? So, yeah. Yes. Where is it, Ricky? The, yeah, you went and looked it up. Where is the, it? The, the question is, where does the current IGFA brown trout record come from? Yeah. yeah. And the answer is Milwaukee. So, no, not Tierra del Fuego. Uh, they're in the 50s. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hooked, I, I'll be honest. I have hooked a fish that was probably in the 30s to 40s. Uh, the mouth of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something. It's not that far, you know. You know, if you're if you're over there on business anyway, and it's the right time of year, take a rod. Is what I'm saying, right? If you're visiting family, take a rod, right? So, okay, uh, we actually have a serious question from the chat. A couple of serious questions. I. Uh, so uh, he said he heard that you mentioned Euro nymphing or tight line nymphing. I was introduced this, to this in Colorado last year. It was unbelievably effective. Is that something you are doing in some of these environments? Yeah. Um, well, we did it, like I said, when the water gets up high yeah. and I can't see or whatever, I shorten everything down. Yeah. So my drift isn't as long because you, the whole thing with nymphs and nymphs and eggs is you want to throw and you want as long a drift as possible, just like everywhere else you throw nymphs, right? So if the water's up and everything, then that's when I'm punching it through and I'm, I'm working and it in shorter. It, you keep contact with the fly through that short. And it's shorter. Whether it's an egg right. or a nymph. It's right. the same thing. It's because right. you can't see into the water. Right. And, and you don't want like, yeah. uh, and with the water going faster, you yeah. don't want like a whole bunch of fly line and then a leader, you Sticker know, you stuff. just want yeah. a leader, yeah. you know, as narrow a leader as possible, really. So, yeah. Okay. And then uh, a couple other questions. Um, he, he, he's asking, when do the rivers typically ice over? I would think the rivers typically stay open all year. No. Uh, what does ice mean? Ice over uh, October to ice browns. I, uh, what does ice mean? Ice over or ice out? It's not over, over. Cause there's always some of the river that's like flowing, mm -hmm. but I have stood on like a 60 foot long ice flow and ridden down the river for fun. So <laughs> It's and you're the one telling people not to uh, go yeah, to Milwaukee. Not right? always the best, so but themselves. it's not. But honestly, so it's still moving. But two things: one, it's dangerous as can be. It really is. And then two, uh, the fish really aren't. They're not caring. They're hunkered. So in a typical year, and that would it, be it like, never... yeah, you know, like last year was like right around Christmas. It was, but that was late. That was late. So it's usually like a little earlier in December, I'd say. I'd say that's about right. So the question is, how long is the fight between uh, hooking it and netting it? So there's two things in there. In those smaller streamies, it's like, in the smaller streams, they don't have anywhere to go as much. So the fight's shorter. It's kind of violent. There's a lot of thrashing and so forth. Hopefully you have a buddy with you or you're in trouble and you know, it's all in close, but on the Milwaukee and on the, you know, like up in Tosa on the Menominee or something, those are getting to be a little bigger on the root. I mean, uh, yeah, on the root. And so um, those fights can be amazing. Like they can be really amazing. You can be in your backing a lot, honestly. You can be in your backing a couple times a day, I'd say probably easy. I don't know where else you're going to find that too often. So, I mean, most of my rods, they never see the backing. So, so yeah, they're pretty tough. Those browns are tough. When they're big, they're, they're tough. They're like really tough. Steelhead, they're, they're a great fight, man. They're fast. I mean, they're moving. So, yeah, pretty great. I don't know. Okay. Other questions? So, what's the um, difference with the Lake Superior? Like, what, what, what is, what is, what is 
Yeah, it's all forge based. So, right? so the question is why the fish are getting so much bigger in Lake Michigan than Lake Superior. Um, it's just forge based. I mean, honestly, like it's like a depth thing. It's like a warmth thing. You know, it's just a better forge base, basically. I think. I think that's really honestly the reason. But, um, I mean, I fished up on the North Shore. It was pretty great. I mean, but the fish weren't quite as big. They're still big. They're just not quite as big. But. Does Lake Michigan have pollution issues? Is it getting better, getting worse? Yeah, it does. Um, it's had terrible ones in the past, but you know, it's been a lot of cleanup going on. Even the Milwaukee River is a cleanup. Menominee River is a cleanup. You know, I mean, but we do what we can and we clean things up when we make mistakes and we remove dams and we do those things, right? And that's the whole point of this. And that's part of this talk is, is it getting better? It's getting better. It's getting a lot better. It may be at a point right now where it's pretty good, you know. That's what I would say. Yeah. They're saying that they're so, starting. So the to question find is that. whether there's any uh, natural reproduction on any of the Wisconsin streams that flow into Lake Michigan. Yeah, and that's predicated on the fact that, like, in Michigan, there is, right? There's a lot, right? Like, you know. So, like, uh, Pierre Marquette, fish at any time you can get on it. Um, that has all natural reproduction, so. But on the Wisconsin but side? But on the Wisconsin side. Gosh, you know, you hear those stories forever, like, the whole time I've been fishing this thing. But I talked to biologists. I've never really found that to be true. I mean, maybe there's a little, but not enough. They they stock it. They stock it heavy. They stock it just for you. So you are meant to play yeah, with those. And, and just as a, uh, an aside, I, I don't think that's strictly – I don't think it's a water quality or pollution issue per se. Oh, no. But they just don't have the spring flow in, because correct. of the geology in eastern Wisconsin like that's they correct. have here in the Driftless or like they have in Michigan. Yeah. And if you don't have spring flow, then you can't have uh, – uh, trout reproducing that's correct yeah, yeah that's right yeah it's a temperature and and, yeah. and clean water flow thing yeah. geology thing yeah. Yeah. all right okay my uh my only question is uh how many of the photos on uh this presentation tonight were deep fakes and which software program did you use yeah uh yeah all deep fakes and uh yeah <laughs> those are all driftless trout so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not telling you which driftless stream they came off of, but <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, that's uh, yeah. it's a it's a fun fisher. I hope some of you will experience yeah. it. And if you need any questions in the future, yeah. you can get my email or whatever, and um, I'll give it to you tonight, and uh, I'll talk it over with you. So yeah, um, so for those no yeah, so for those of you who are on the Zoom, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Matt, we really appreciate you coming and talking to us. You've really uh, opened uh, our eyes, I think, to a, a great fishery. Uh, we have a small gift of appreciation for you. Oh, that's this is an original TCTU Silly Pint mug. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> to be well used. It will keep your coffee yeah. hot and your beer cold. Oh, well, you know, yes. I need both, so that'll work. Uh, but seriously, uh, thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, I think Matt will be hanging around for a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, again, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, y'all. This is really nice. Y'all are first class. <laughs> thank you. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah.